runs tangent to the chicken, okay? And, and of course, the rib cage is on, is on the back of the bird, or, you know, on a chicken, everything's upside down, okay? The, the, the loin is on the breast. On a, on a, on a foreleg and on a quadruped, the loin is up on the back, okay? But on the chicken, the loin is on the breast, all right? So the rib cage is down here. So we're gonna, we're gonna scoop sideways, okay? There's one lung. And I'm gonna come right in along that backbone and scoop side. So, so, so the, the motion is like this. I'm going like this, all right? I'm not going like this. You go like this, everything just shred, you, you can't get it. You've got that sharp rib cage and it just sits there. It's like, uh, I don't, I'm afraid I'll get into the same problem that Dave had with the merry go around, so I won't use a metaphor. But, but are you with me? It's, it's, it's like trying to pull something across a corrugation, you know, it's, it's really hard to do. So you want to work with the rib cage. Like a there. washboard. Yeah, like a washboard, exactly. So there's the other, there's the other one. And I think my windpipe, yeah, it did. Uh, broke off a little bit, lots of times they will, right there in the breast, so I get my last little uh, piece of the windpipe there, pull it out, and um, then I'll spray it out a bit with some water, okay, get all the little chodies out of there, clean off the carcass a little bit, and then I'm going to put an incision right here in this, because I cut real low on the abdomen, I've got plenty of skin here left to make another little incision here, and I can poke the legs in that skin incision. I can even tuck the wings behind the shoulders here and make, stay in there, wing, and make a first to fresh, fresh chicken. Do we leave the kidneys in? Yeah. Good question. Uh, no, the kidneys came out with the guts. Well, forget the forget the wings. It's too, it's too fresh. Okay. Well, they're you, anyway, the point is now you have an oven ready, retail ready, saleable chicken. Okay, that's that's the deal. So, so now, since these birds are getting a little bit dry out here, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do a fast one and do a couple fast ones just so so you can see, and then we'll slow it down again. And we're glad to entertain questions. We're gonna go through it. Literally, you know, as if they were um, breaking down into its component parts. All right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Oil sack. All right. Crop. Stubborn. Neck tubes, abdominal cut, take the fat off the gizzard, scoop out the guts, pull out the gallbladder, just clean up the table here a little bit. particular batch it I'd say is about 75% yep typically it, it does 
that kind of depends on how your how your scald goes. Uh, if you if you're scalding head first, feet last, often the feet do not peel. But in, in one like this, the feet get about an equal amount of scald. So yeah, don't don't miss that point because when you're you know when you're scalding like you know in a bucket and you're putting them up and down and up and down, what do you hold? You hold the feet, don't you? You don't hold the head, right? Well, the feet, the feet are the toughest part. That, that's the that's the toughest that's the toughest part of the bird. The tenderest part of the bird is the breast. And so, typically, what happens in a in a holding the feet and up and down motion is, in order to get the feet to peel really well, uh, then you over scald the breast. All right. And so that's why these rotary. That's why I'm such a big believer in the rotary scalder. Is that all of the bird gets uh, equally immersed. There's no, uh, there's no first in, last out. It, yeah. it, it's all, it's all equally done. Huh. Lungs came out with the guts on that. Your question, man. What kind of birds are they? Eight weeks on pasture, this big. Good question. These are Cornish cross. Yes, uh, we find Cornish cross, the race car chicken really does amazingly well on pasture they they will march forward just keeping up with whatever structure you have i've had a, a, a scenario where i asked them to walk 50 feet every day and wondering if they were going to you know just plop down and not want to do it no problem they learned how to do that and they just got right after the program the difference it, it's a good question and one that's debated a lot these days heritage breeds we love heritage breeds we love any breed on pasture is what we love. Yeah. But if you're going to have a heritage breed that takes 10, 12, even more weeks, then you have to be the marketer that convinces that customer that the extra price for you to feed that bird for two, four, or six more weeks and your time to take care of those birds for two, four, or six more weeks is, is going to be captured in your price. Yeah. yeah we, love, I, we, love, we love the Cornish cross. Yeah. Um, but let me just say a word about that from a marketing standpoint. You know, you're. Um, a, mar a market, your, your customers will only allow you to be so weird. <laughs> you, know, you can be a Buddhist and you can be a nudist, but a nudist, Buddhist, you know, it's just, it's just weird. <laughs> and so, we're, we're out on the limb, but we're not out totally in, in space. So, so, um, so, you know, here you are, you're telling people, um, you know, you don't need, you don't buy your chickens at Walmart. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, I'm going to get another and, batch going, Joel. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and actually, you know, you want a chicken that you actually cook at home, and preferably a whole chicken. Um, and you're going to have to cook it yourself. Um, you know, and, and then when you tell them not only all of that, but it's going to be all brown meat, a razor breast, and, uh, and, and old enough that you can't fast cook it, that you can't fry it, you know. Um, suddenly, you've just become a, a nudist Buddhist. So... There are absolutely, you know, discriminating, discriminating uh, uh, clients who, who, you know, appreciate the the brown meat, razor-breasted, tougher uh, bird. But um, but from a marketing standpoint, uh, it's much much easier to give a person a much better product of a product that they're already already used to using and looks familiar um, that their kids aren't going to say, ew, you know, what's this? They actually give them a, you know, a nice big plump breast. Any of the um, kids want to come up close to watch this? Yeah, uh, they're welcome. You want, any of the kids you want to come up here? I've got one more bird if you want to come up close. Coming up around. So, yeah, so you, you know, our, I, I make no, I make no, uh, no apologies that, you know, one of our goals at Polyface is that we, we would actually like to see the entire factory farming poultry industry eliminate. <laughs> but I'm going to suggest that the first step to elimination is 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 going to be you know a bird that is that is more common in the, that, that looks more like what people are used to in the market used to handling than a bird that's really really different. This is uh, it's like a Sunday school class. <laughs> it is a Sunday school class. It is a Sunday school class. <laughs> Thank you. Fair enough. It's a woman of faith. All right. Good.
There we go. All right. We think it's important to realize, you know, these, these chickens don't talk to you. They're not, you know, we, we've Disney-fied our world into a, into a place of, uh, of, of profound uh, disconnection with the visceral foundations of life. And uh, we think it's important to, to participate in that. And, and, and we feel honored to be able to participate in that. Uh, it's really good. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. you talk about bacteria levels? Like, bacteria levels. Yeah, bacteria level. That's great. Well, the only, the only test right now that, that I know of for me, and I know other tests have been done, but I don't know what they are, but we did one quite a few years ago um, and had them... We, we, we took our birds samples and took and went to the, to the store and actually bought you know birds in the store and uh, and sent them to the lab had them cultured uh, and they measure this I'm, I'm going to get over my pay grade here but but they measure this in colony forming units of bacteria per milliliter to the second permutation and I already told you it happened more than I understand but that's how they measure how clean they are yeah, CFU per mil, it's, it's how many, you know, colony-forming colony units, CFU, colony-forming units uh, per, in, in a culture, okay? And the, uh, and the supermarket birds, which of course had been through 40 chlorine baths and had a nice big, you know, U.S. duh um, inspection sticker on it, um, government sanctioned, uh, they averaged 3,600 CFU per mil, Ours averaged 133. Okay? So, the, the, the truth is that there is just something, um, something amazingly hygienic and sanitary about doing small groups, not running this every day. We don't, we don't process every day. Our equipment sits, it actually sits idle way more days than we use it. And, um, and, and in fact, you know, I, I would go so far as to say that, you know, in the organic animal, whatever, rights right, community, you know, I don't hear anybody talking about the actual inhumanity of running a, a, an abattoir model in which the economic and logistical model requires somebody to kill animals every day. Nobody should kill animals every day. I mean, in the Old Testament, in the biblical Levitical priesthood, you know, they only did, they did one month stints, the priests. You know, that was basically a slaughterhouse, the tabernacle and the temple, you know, were sacrificed. It was, it was a great big, you know, slaughterhouse. And, uh, and, and even the priests drew straws and, and went, you know, you do incense this month, I'll kill the animals. Next month, I'll do the incense. You, you know, they, they rotated through because it's simply not humanly, psychologically good to do this every day, all day. And um, so, you know, I find it amazing that in many of the, you know, animal welfare groups, whatever, uh, you know, too often, they're far more interested in the animal component of this than in what kind of a food system, food model, big picture, are we cultivating where, where we can't have a model uh, in which the people that are doing this get to do other things. So on our farm, you know, we, we process in the morning, we'll do five or 600 birds, it takes us two or three hours, and then we go make hay in the afternoon, or we or we weed tomatoes in the afternoon, or, or can pickles, or you know what I'm saying? And and that that uh, that completely changes the, um, you know, the element of, of life here by being able to move through, I don't even know what the question was now. Um, <laughs> I think I started on the bacteria, and, and, and just that, that, it, that it's a lot easier to keep this clean when it's used uh, sparingly and uh, you know and intermittently, and, and, and in fact, open air. You know, those of you who read my book, everything I want to do is illegal. Know that I talk about how the you know the the, uh, the food police came and uh, told us that, that open air was inherently unsanitary and made an inedible chicken in the open air. Uh, the air is inherently unsanitary, you know, and um, I want him to hold his breath, you know, so he couldn't breathe anymore. Um, but before I, get, uh, before I could get to the shop and get the duct tape to really shut him down, he left, you know, so he quit breathing. But. 
But uh, the, the truth is that by empirical measures, this is far cleaner. And one of the things that we've talked about, and I hope anybody that wants to do this will join the American Pastor Poultry Producers Association. I'll put in a raw plug for this nonprofit world leader in the latest, greatest in American in, in, in pastor poultry. It's a -pa 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 -pa. Okay, yeah, American -P -P Pastor Poultry Producers Association. Need to belong. Yeah, and um, and David's the, the new president, and um, and it's you know it's been it's been running for a good many years. Um, remember it. But uh, one of the things that we've talked about is trying to to have very low cost. Um, uh, sam sampling done so that we can actually you know present our samples or, or present our, our, our bacterial counts our, our samples okay there we go batch two okay, if, the, if the picker if the, if the picker uh, tears the skin um, again it's not the picker don't say oh the picker's bad if the skin tears, it's because the scald is too hot. Yeah. The, the, I messed up. The picker will, well, I don't know if it's tearing the skin. It's not, but if, it, if there's but, a problem. But if, if there's a problem, it's the scald or it's not the, not the picker. So, you know, when you're in a family and you're doing this, you want to be the guy running the picker because it's never the picker's fault. <laughs> If, 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 if you're if you're the guy doing the doing the the, uh, the doing the killing or the scalding, then you know you can uh, you can be at fault for something. But uh, the picker, all you gotta do is throw them in, pull them out. There you go, nice beautiful birds. These are these are pretty birds, Jeff. Yep. They've done a nice job here. Good birds. Somebody's gonna take them home. Okay, so here we go. Um, anybody want to pull off a head? <laughs> Come on up here. Come on up here. Here you go. You ready? Come here. Grab, grab the head here. Grab the head right here. Right there. Right down here low. Now you got the neck. Come on. You got to get in there. Don't get your hand out from behind your back. Get, get with it. Okay, you ready? Okay. Pull. You let go. You can't do it until you pull. Get on her. Are you, are you done? You want somebody else to do it? Who else wants to pull that? Come on. Who wants to pull that? Come on. Come on. Come on. Wants. Ready? Anybody that wants. This is not, not pressure, but we're glad for you to try. Okay, there you go. Grab it. Now pull that booker off. Pull it. Pull it. There! She did it. And all the women said girl power. Okay. All right. Uh, who else? Who else? Come on up. Come on up. We got, we got three more to go. Come on. Okay. Get a hold of that head. Get a hold of it. There you go. Get a hold of it. Grip it good and tight. All right, now start to pull. Pull, 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 pull. That's it. Now you got the neck. You got to get the head. You got to, got to get the head. There, get, get your head there. Put, put your thumb right. Put your thumb right in that hole. There you go. Now, go ahead, pull it. Good job. Get out of it. Get out of it. That's right. Get 